Whatever happened to the likely lads? Hello, Audrey. Is Terry home? Um... Yeah, he's in the living room looking after Fleur. How are you then? How are you then? Hey, what a heartwarming scene. Hey? <laughs> oh, it's you. What's so funny? You! You just look so out of place. I'm just earning me keep. Our Audrey's putting us up till my mum and dad get home. Oh, I forgot to ask, Bob. How's Thelma? Oh, she's fine, thanks. Wonders never cease. Um, is it all right if I take your au pair girl out for a drink? Well, she was supposed to cut the lawn. Oh, I'll do that this afternoon. You said that yesterday. Do you want to eat with us, Bob? The kids are going to the grands. Well, if you're sure you've got enough. Well, it's roast lamb and mint sauce. We'll eat at 1.30. I'll just get Mummy's little girl ready. Pubs aren't open yet. Sunday. I know, I thought you might fancy a drive. Hey, that's a good idea. See how the old place looks these days. Hey, I'll tell you where we would go. What's the name of that coffee bar we used to go to? Um, uh, the Marimba, that's it. You remember? That big sexy waitress with the green fingernails? Oh, yes, uh, the Marimba. You must have got the wrong street. That's a laundrette. And a very scruffy one and all. Yes, well, underneath that scruffy exterior lies the gutted shell of the Marimba coffee bar. I don't believe it. Oh, hell. What happened to the waitress? She became a traffic warden. <laughs> what a waste. Do you remember our banana splits? <laughs> and, those, and those big raspberry cones? <laughs> With the little green specks on top? Green specks? You mean pistachio? No, nail varnish. <laughs> Do you know where we are now? Vaguely. I just can't quite place... Uh, buried in the concrete bowels of that glass ward office block is the ghost of the Go-Go Rock Club. Members only, closed Sundays, licensed till three. The North's premier music mecca. The Go-Go? Gone? <laughs> Gone. But not forgotten. People say that if you come here after midnight during a full moon, you sometimes catch a glimpse of a headless guitarist... And hear the muted strains of Roll Over Beethoven. Hey, it brings tears to the eyes. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to fish in that canal? Sunday afternoons. If we haven't got a fixture. I'll tell you what, Bob. We'll come back after dinner. Let's get a hold of a couple of rods and come back this afternoon. Pointless, no fish. No fish? Why? Pollution. Didn't you see that stone I dropped in? The way it almost bounced. <laughs> oh, come on, Bob. Man, we've always had pollution. The North East invented pollution. Long before it became fashionable down south. Terry, there isn't a live fish between here and the North Sea. What with the chemical works, the new oil refinery... God save us. Surely there must be one of the old places left. Hockley Woods. Oh, I. Let's go. Ah, this is more like it. Bit overgrown, mine. But... Hey, up! I remember climbing that one. Don't remember those houses over there, though. I used to spend whole summers in Hockley Woods, lazy, sunny days, making tree houses, playing hide and seek, picking blackberries, trying to get Deirdre Birchwood's gym slip off. <laughs> Hey, you see that tree over there? I think that's the one where Isabel Ritchie and me used to... Never. I'm positive. I can tell by the shape of the branches. <laughs> we carved our initials on that trunk. I don't remember this fence. Hey, I was right. Look, they're here. T.C. Hart and Arrow I.R. Eee, that's incredible. And somehow very sad. Aye. She'll probably have varicose veins by now. Hey! I say! You there! Who's that? They don't have parties here now, do they? Not that I know of. Morning. Lovely day. Would you mind telling me how you got in here? Over the fence. Did you, by God? 
What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, hang on, hang on. There's no need to get so shirty. We're not doing any harm. We're just out for a walk. Oh, are you? Well, we'll see about that. Well, is, isn't this Hockley Woods? It was. It is now Hockley Woods Estate. That is my house. This is my garden. You are trespassing, and I am going to call the police. Bloody hell. Dear me. <laughs> At least the black horse is still standing. It's a wonder they haven't pulled this down and built a civic centre. Cheers. They don't need to. The new civic centre's being built on the site of... the old Roxy. You're kidding? No. Oh, Bob, not the Roxy. Afraid so. Oh, hell's teeth, that really does it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I should have broken it to you more gently. Still, you had to find out sometime. I mean, that's terrible. The National Trust should have put a preservation order on that place. That's part of my life. Part of your life belonged to the Roxy. Oh, yeah, I know. I suppose the National Trust needs a better reason than that. No more Roxy. What's the point of going on? None of our other memories are intact, except the juvenile court. Yes, today's made me realise just how much this place has changed. When you're here all the time, you don't notice it so much. I suppose it's a good thing, really. Progress, expansion... A lot more opportunities up here now. You wouldn't think so if you went down the Labour Exchange. There's precious few opportunities on display down there, unless you want to work for British Rail parcels or hose down a brewery van. Oh, um, you've been down to the Labour, have you? What? Oh, well, I mean, uh, well, I had to for the insurance card, you see. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, the insurance card, yeah, yeah. I just thought for a minute you might have been uh, looking for a job. There's no mad rush. I've still got a bob or two. I'm not on the bread line yet. I don't have to rush into any old job, you know. I'm going to think about it first, sort myself out. Not even sure I want to stay here. Not now they've pulled down the Roxy. Well, not stay here. Where would you go? Go? I can go anywhere. This town may have a new civic centre, mate, but that doesn't disguise the fact that it's a dead end, especially for someone who's seen a bit of the world, who's travelled, who's broadened his horizons. But you belong here. You've always said this is the only place you feel comfortable in. If you get on a train to King's Cross, you feel jittery by Doncaster. Oh, Bob, man, that was ten years ago when I didn't know any better. Before I had a chance to, well, see life. Yes, but what could you do? I can turn me hand at whatever comes up. I'm not helpless, you know. Look, there was this bloke with me in the army. Really good mates we were. A lad called Huey McLaren. Never had any kind of education or anything... He'd been a baker in Berwick. And I said to him once, what are you going to do when you get out, Huey? And do you know what he said? I'll never forget it. He said, anything I like. Anything I like? Anything I like. Not, well, what can I do except bake bread in Berwick? Oh, no. He wasn't going to lie down, let life walk all over him. Anything I like, that's what he said. Marvellous. Yeah, I can just see the headlines now. ex Berwick Baker becomes Foreign Secretary. Ah, oh, that's typical of your small-town mentality. If you don't believe in yourself, you'll never amount to anything. You know what Huey did when he got demobbed in Aden? He didn't take the plane home, oh no. He hitchhiked all the way from Aden. Now, a bloke like that could do anything. Fur trapping in Canada, drive to Kathmandu, row the Atlantic, and I might just go with him. But Terry, your roots are here, man. Roots? I was uprooted from here seven years ago. Uprooted and dumped down in some drafty barracks, thanks to you. Yeah, true. But without which, you would never have seen life. You'd never have the urge to row across the Atlantic or drive to Kathmandu in a baker's van. <laughs> all right, all right, go ahead, laugh. I'm just saying, one day, yeah. one day... Perhaps you will, one day. In the meantime, you need time to adjust, time to sort things out. Bob, if I need a job to tide me over, I can just go back to Ellison's. Old Darby told me himself when I went in. Don't worry, Terry lad, when you come out, your job will be waiting for you. No problem. Well, there is one. What's that? Ellison's was pulled down two years ago. <laughs> About the same time as the Roxy. Ye gods, is nothing sacred. Anyone want 
want more lamb? Not you, Ernie. You're too fat already. Marvellous. I'm only the breadwinner, that's all. Well, have another piece of bread, Bob. Uh, no, thanks. That was really great. Do you still get your meat from Beals, the butchers? No, it's been pulled down. Oh. Is there anything left standing in this town? One solitary pre-1967 brick standing on another? What are you on about? Oh, I've told him about Ellison's being pulled down. <coughs> well, it was to make way for the new underpass. But they went bust six months before that happened. Ellison's. Who'd have thought it? Well, Bob saw it coming, didn't you, Bob? Uh, yes. Yes, you got out before the crunch came. Very sensible, very shrewd, Bob. Best move you ever made. Well... I mean, look how well you've done since. Yeah, come to think of it, where are you working now? Oh, uh, another company, another line of country altogether. Oh, yeah? And what's the name of it? Well, it's, um... Thelma's dad runs it. Building and civil engineering. That's what you're in now, Bob, isn't it? Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you? How sensible, how shrewd of you to get out before the crunch came. No wonder your engagement to Thelma went on again. Might lose a job as well as a wife. It wasn't like that at all. Get away. Mr Chambers does me no favours. I have to pull my weight just as much as the next man. Aye. Only the next man's not marrying his daughter, though, but is he? You can think what you like. I'm not prepared to discuss it any further. Perhaps Bob might be able to fix you up with a job, Terry. No, I don't need any strings pulled from me. I don't need the old pals act. One day... One day... One day what? One day he and Huey McLaren will be washed ashore at Whitley Bay. <laughs> the first men to have crossed the North Sea on a tea tray. Who's Huey McLaren? Haven't you heard of Huey McLaren? A legend in his own lunchtime. <laughs> the man who went from Aden to Aldershot on a camel. That's right. That's right. Go on, sneer. Huey taught me a lot. He taught me there's more to life than a salary and the superannuation fund. Why would anyone want to go from Aden to Aldershot on a camel? <laughs> he didn't. Bob's talking to the back of his neck, as usual. Well, at least you're a qualified electrician, Terry. You shouldn't have much trouble getting a job. Yeah, I can ask around if you like. No, thank you. I don't want any help from you or anybody else. I've got a few ideas of my own. A few ambitions, a few plans. And getting a job around here doesn't fit into any of them. Oh, uh, excuse me, um, is Mr Busby around? No, he's out, I'm afraid. Oh. What was it about? Oh, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the Labour Exchange sent me, uh, told me you were looking for electricians. Uh, they told me to come down right now. Hang on, I'll see what I can do. Not bad, not bad. Can he pair her legs over? But... The assistant site manager will see you in a moment. Sorry there's nothing to sit on. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. I'll, I'll just stand. What's the matter with your leg? I never talk about it. Ah, there's been some changes round here, though, but... Ah, you certainly notice it when you've been away for a few years. When you've been overseas, Europe, the Mediterranean, the Far East. Oh, I see. The way you've got your hair cut, I thought you'd been in prison. <laughs> I, uh... I see they pulled down the Roxy. The where? The Roxy. Don't oh, tell me you've never heard of the Roxy Ballroom. I might have. I don't go in much for old time dancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go in now. Terry? Uh, Bob? What in the world are you doing here? Uh, well, well, I, I, I was. Um... Sit down, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Nice of you to drop in. Uh, well, yes, yeah, I, I, I was, you know, just, just passing like, so I thought I'd... Um... You thought you might just as well drop in and say hello. Yes, yes, that's it. Hello. <laughs> hello. Great, great. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, yes, yes, smashing. Uh, well, that, that, that's why I dropped in, really. <laughs> thought so. Hang on. Wendy! Ah, oh, Wendy. Uh, Miss Layton. Uh, cup of tea, please. Um, two teas, please. And uh, one of those nice chocolate biscuits for Mr Collier. One lump or two? I'll just put a bowl on the tray, dear. Yes, Bob. Oh, Mr Ferris? Uh, I can't chat for too long. There's a bloke out there waiting to see me about a job. 
<laughs> Some sparky the Labour Exchange sent down. <laughs> <laughs> Still let him wait. They're to a penny at the moment. <laughs> yes, well, um... <clears throat> I didn't realise this firm belonged to your future father-in-law. Well, Harvey's, yes, yeah, a subsidiary. There's four firms in the group now. Oh, I see, and uh, do you interview people for all of them? Well, not normally, no. That's Frank Busby's job. I'm just sitting in for him. <laughs> Power mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, sit back, man. Relax, relax. You're all right for a few minutes. Well, I... I, I uh... Look, uh, Terry, I know you're looking for something different, but, well, if you change your mind... I mean, I could always... Well, I mean, Frank Busby could always... No, no, th thanks, Bob, thanks, but I've made my decision. I'm not staying. That's what I really came to tell you. I, I thought you should be the first to know uh, I'm moving on. Moving on? Where to? Well, things aren't quite finalised yet. I've got to look up Huey first. Uh, Huey McLaren? That's right, yes, yes. And, uh, well, from then on, we'll just play it by ear. I see, I see. When are you leaving? Hey... Oh, oh, this week sometime. I mean, there's no point in hanging about, is there? No, I suppose not, no. You'll miss my wedding. Aye, I know, I thought about that. Still, your in-laws won't be sorry. And neither will Thelma. I will be. Well, I'll send you a telegram. Could be quite pricey from Kathmandu. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't think we'll have got that far by then. It depends which route we take. You only just got back. Now you're off again. I didn't know you had so much gypsy in your soul. <laughs> ah, it's those years in the army, Bob, you see. They gave me a taste for excitement, adventure, a taste for exotic places, the unknown, hint of mystery and danger. It's in the blood, man. That's why I have to go and join Huey. Whereabouts is he? Berwick-on-Tweed. <laughs> well, there's not much danger and mystery about Berwick-on-Tweed, is there? You can take a day trip up there on a bus. Well, you were talking, I thought at least he was a mercenary in Mozambique. That's his home, you pillock. <laughs> That's where we're going to meet and plan things and buy stores and such like. And then you're going to set off through uncharted waters in search of the source of the tweed. <laughs> all right, all right, sneer away. Huh? It's that sort of attitude that is driving me away. I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to drive you away. I don't want you to go away at all. Please. Tea up. Oh, congratulations. No. What? I see you got the job in. I... Wait a minute. Uh... Wendy, is, is this the bloke you said was outside waiting to see me about a job? What? If I was, which I wouldn't, you know what you can do with it. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't really want to go, Audrey. Of course he didn't, Bob. Where's that postcard, Ord? Over on the mantelpiece. Hang on, I'll get it. Picture of Berwick Castle. What's it say? Nothing much. Just a reminder that we owe him a pound for cutting the lawn. Did he put the address? <laughs> yes, so we'd know where to send the pound to. Hmm. Did you mention any plans? I mean, that Hugh McLaren or anything? No. Oh, if you ask me, he only wrote to let us know where he was, so we'd all write begging him to come back. I could drive up there on Saturday, if you like. Have a chat with him. See if I can persuade him to come back. No chance of you going up before then, is there? Why? We need a babysitter for Friday night. <laughs> Do you know, I think it's a smashing idea you've got, working in that car wash. No, really, really great. <laughs> Do you have to work till six every Saturday? Go to hell. No, really. <laughs> Honestly, no, I, I envy you. you. Envy me what? Filthy damp overalls and chap dans. Look at them. They don't wash them cars with fairy liquid, you know. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, the whole idea of what you're doing, travelling around, doing different jobs, meeting different people... Don't bloody patronise me, I, Ferris. I'm not, honestly, Terry, I'm not. Listen, I know. You came up here to have a good laugh, to humiliate me again. Not content with interviewing me for a job, you have to drive all the way up here to catch me on the end of a squeegee. That's not true. <laughs> I swear to you, Terry, that's absolutely not true. Well, it's a bloody long way to come just to wash your car. I came to see you. Terry, listen to me. I really do envy you. You're getting it together. 
It's a whole easy ride a bit. Getting straight, taking off, moving on. All I'm doing is ringing out. <laughs> Listen, Elvis Presley worked in a car wash. Well, in a song, anyway. It's all part of this new idea of personal freedom. The youth kick. They didn't want possessions, a job, a home. They want to be on the open road, trucking down to New Mexico. Or freaking out with a guru in... Yes, in... I know, Kathmandu. No, wherever, wherever. You know the sort of thing. By the time I get to Phoenix, 24 hours from Tulsa, all you need is a sleeping bag and a harmonica. I don't play the harmonica. <laughs> details, details. We're talking in broad concepts. Maybe you could live in a commune. Bob, 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 I'm sorry to shatter your romantic notions. But I am not about to give up my worldly goods to go traipsing about with a sleeping bag and a harmonica. It's a bit different when you say, by the time I get to Peebles, <laughs> or I'm only 24 hours from Falkirk. <laughs> For a start, I have no worldly goods to give up. And I am not working in a car wash as a tribute to Elvis Presley. I'm working to pay for me room and board in that grotty old woman's house. Two coffees. Hello, Terry. Hi. The point is, you've made a gesture. OK, so it's a rotten job, but it's worth it. You've made me think twice about getting... Well, getting suffocated, bogged down. You've made me realise life has got more to offer. Has it? Why don't we get together and grab some of it? What? What do you mean, you and me? Yes, the two of us. Oh, forget it. Pass the sugar. Here. And lend us your spoon. Do you think, do you think, do you think my life is so exciting, eh? Putting up shelves, choosing table linen, planting edges, saving every penny, staying up all hours of a dreary correspondence course. Do you think that's living? Of course I've nursed romantic notions. To visit places I've only seen in the colour supplements. To meet girls I've watched on Hawaii Five-O. <laughs> but I, I thought you and Thelma had everything settled. Look, none of us are what we seem, mate. I don't want to be one of the people who only experience life second-hand. You've made the break, and it's time I did. Before it's too late. Ah, oh, Bob, no, you're the one that's right, and I'm the one that's got it all wrong. People need a home, roots, security. That's the only thing that makes sense. What did your mate Hugh McLaren say about what it was going to do, hmm? Anything I like. Well, we can do anything we like. I can cash in my post office book, sell the car. But, but, but what about Thelma? She'll have to understand. A man has to do what a man has to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I know what I have to do. And that's take you back home where we both belong. Hey, up. Coming, Jerry. The drinks are on me. Uh, like another coffee? No, thanks, Huey. How much are you? Uh, that's uh, two now, plus two you're going to had with a couple of rock cakes. Uh, call it 35 altogether. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, finished with these, have you? Aye, we're finished. Terry, um, is that... Um, yes? That, that's not... Um, it is. Not the Huey. In person. <laughs> but I mean, what happened? Exactly, what happened. He came back put his childhood sweetheart up the stick, married her, and swept her off to a caravan site. <laughs> He's got a 95% mortgage on this place, and if you work 16 hours a day for the next 30 years, you'll just about have paid off the tea urn. Farewell, Kathmandu. Let's go home. Nice to see you back, Terry. Nice to be back, Ernie. That armchair all right? Not the cushion? No, no, this is fine. Fire, not too hot. I can turn off one of the bars. No, 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 it's fine. How about the telly? Picture all right? Not too red, is it? No, 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 that's fine too. Oh, we were all worried about you going off like that. We didn't know what to do. Really? No, we, we didn't have a babysitter for tonight. Oh, thanks a bunch. I'm sorry to have caused you so much distress, so much anxiety. Never mind, no harm done. Oh, that'll be Bob and Selma. I'll go. What do you think of me evening dress, Terry? You'll do. It only looks a bit tight under the armpits. Yeah. Audrey, you look smashing. Thanks, Bob. You look very nice, too. Hey, where's Selma? Oh, she's just popped upstairs to powder her nose. Whose car we going in, yours or mine? Hey, up. Are you not staying here with me, then? I didn't dress up like this just to come and see you. Audrey invited Thelma and me to go along to this party with them. Sort of celebration. Oh, charming, to which I am not invited. Well, you haven't got a bow tie, have you? Or an evening dress. 
Good job and all. Hate to look as ridiculous as you and Ernie. You look like a couple of pregnant penguins. <laughs> oh, I'll go and get me wrapped. Listen, Terry, about that job. I had a word with Frank Busby and it's still open. Union rates, plus our own incentive scheme and bags of overtime. And you never a... give up, do you? What do you mean? Poking your nose into my affairs, worrying about my welfare, making assumptions. All right, so I'm back home. But that doesn't alter my thinking on certain fundamental principles. I haven't come back here just to end up working for some tin pot jerry builder with you prancing round the site every five minutes, flaunting your newfound status and your pocket slide rule. You ungrateful pig! Why I bother to rescue you from the obscurity of a Scottish car wash, I'll never you know. You? Rescue me? It was me who had to drag you back here almost by the scruff of the neck. Oh, for God's sake, stop it, you two. You? Terry. You? You were the one who wanted to go a-roaming through the gloaming with a sleeping bag and a harmonica. I... Harmonica! I can't play one and you haven't got one. What a fiasco that would have been. I could have bought one, I could have bought one, and you could have learned to play. Anyone can do anything, remember? But who was it got cold feet? Not me, mate. I was prepared to drop everything. The car, the job, the house, Thelma, everything. And just take off, there and then. How interesting. And when did you intend to tell me of this change of plan, or were you not going to bother? Oh, Thelma. Um, <laughs> what? Um, no, um, still... I mean... Put your coat on, Bob. You can explain later. Yes, Pat. Bob. <laughs> what? Enjoy the party. <laughs> You've just been listening to Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. James Polham and Rodney Bewes appeared as Terry and Bob, with Bridget Forsyth as Bob's fiance Thelma, and Sheila Fern as Terry's sister Audrey. Ernie, her husband, was played by Michael Siegel, Huey and the house owner by John Sampson, Wendy by Corinna Marlowe. Series created and written by Dick Clement and Ian Lafrene. Programme produced by John Browell. Listen again next week to part five, I'll Never Forget What's Her Name. <laughs>